Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. Now, before we get on to the Citadel of Lead, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you about my birthplace of Cranach Mir, as we are right in that vicinity, having just touched on the Black Alec of Ochness. Ah, yes, that will be most enlightening. I'm more than happy to hear about what a typical village in Albion is like. Oh, well, actually, you may be disappointed then. Cranach Mir is not typical. If you recall, the majority of Albionites live in the numerous cave systems that have come to act as our anchors in the wasteland of fens and bogs that dominate the island. At least, uh, they've dominated it since the disappearance of the old ones. Well, anyhow, Cranach Mir is not one of these. It's more of an outlier, a different kind of settlement that somehow stands defiant against the inhospitable environment, despite not having thick rock walls to protect it. Although, it is not the only place to uh, stray from the norm, if you like. And uh, we've already discussed another example of a similarly unusual type of settlement. The tent city of Bola Hat. That place survives through strength of numbers. Quantity over quality, if you like. But my uh, lake cradle settlement of Cranach Mir persists through cunning, not might. Quality over quantity. Oh, yeah, yeah, please tell us more. But uh, what do you mean, Lake Cradled, by the way? Och, is that not a word in your Reichspiel then? Ach, well, in that case, let me take you on a little journey, actually into my village. If we do that, I'm sure its meaning will soon become very apparent to you. Ah, yes, we are all ears. Excellent. Well then, I recommend that you two have yourselves a large swig of your drink. Lean back, close your eyes and concentrate on my voice as I take you into the very heart of my homeland. <sighs> right. Are you ready then, gentlemen? Ah, uh, yes. I am ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Excellent. Then I will begin. Now, the hills surrounding Cranach Mere are covered in dark, gloomy forest. The trees there are home to many elemental creatures, twisted and tainted monsters, a few hardy outlaws, and many, many spiders of all shapes and stripes. And uh, because of this, webs cover the canopy and the trees there are, uh, more often than not, thick with sticky silk strands as well as the uh, dangling dead that have been wrapped in poisonous swathing bands and strung up to be consumed later by those uh, pesky arachnids. Now, the winds that way are cold and wet and eerily whistle through the forests, biting into your skin like a thousand tiny daggers. They also drive the rain this way and that and ensure that even if you... Uh, deemed to take shelter, you still got a good cold soaking, irrespective of whatever you do to try and stay dry. As you weave your way through the forest, taking the puddle-infested paths that exist there, your feet squelching with every footfall, you'll be uh, able to smell the marshes that surround my home of Cranach Mere long before you're able to see them. It's, uh, it's an earthy 
moldy smell, a slimy and uh, asphyxiating odour that uh, we used to call froggy when I was a young'un. But uh, anyhow, once you've cleared the tree line, the land opens up into rolling hills. These are covered with long grass and wildflowers and interspersed with outcroppings of hard, weather-worn rock. Here you'll see stags and deer as they stalk the streams that run down the hillsides, looking for safe spots to drink. But please, cast out of your mind any golden images of wildlife, such as those you see depicted in the oil paintings of the old masters here in Tilia. For Albion is not like that. The leaden sky above seems to suck the colour out of the green sod and turf below and makes everything feel just grey. The only things that fight against this grey are the stark and bright lightning flashes that dance down from the clouds, cutting through the whistling wind and heralding the sound of rumbling thunder. That ubiquitous shadow that constantly rolls over our heads. Still, it is a beautiful place. Oh, yeah. It uh, sounds rather inhospitable to me. And uh, I am a uh, Nordlander. Oh, well, you're not wrong, perhaps. But uh, it's still beautiful to me. It is my home, after all. Anyhow, as you descend down towards the marshes that edge the lakes, the smell of cloying wetness will grow. But as you near the village, even though it won't be visible yet, this will give way to the smell of burning peat and cooking meat. That is the smell of home, my home at least. And if the mists are not too thick, you should see uh, wispy columns of smoke stretching up into the ubiquitous clouds. As you keep going, you'll find that you begin to climb again, ever so slightly, for there is a slight rise around Cranach Mere before you enter the depression within which the village lies. This is the first of our defences. Camouflage. For you cannot attack what you cannot see. The village itself is not visible until you get close enough to peer over the ridge overlooking it. But if you're there and you can see us, then our sentries can certainly see you too. The second of our defences is that the village is built in the middle of a lake. Long, thick reeds flanking it with no visible way of crossing the stretch of water other than by swimming or by boat. Four, you cannot attack what you cannot reach. From the shoreline of the lake, you'll be able to see a number of our uh, sod hut dwellings. Some are built on sturdy stilts. Others have been constructed atop small artificial islands just off the main isle, linked by causeways of built up mud and lined with logs. These are also great places to fish, and I spent many long days there with my cousin Tiernan when we were both young. Dragonflies zooming this way and that over our heads as our fathers rode coracles out on the lake, likewise fishing for the day's supper, and our mothers tended to the cooking fires. On other days, we'd accompany the adults out on our uh, stilts and wandered the fens. They hunting larger prey, and we collecting edible insects, searching for wild fruits, catching small animals and birds, and harvesting shellfish, uh, amongst other things. Basically, anything we could get our grubby little mitts on and eat. Anyhow, now we are at the water's edge, and you're probably wondering, how do you get to the village? No coracle is coming to ferry you across, I can tell you that. But uh, the answer is easy. You just have to walk. Eh? 
What, uh, what do you mean, Master Alchemist? Ah, well, now, as you walk out into the lake, you'll find that you won't be sinking. No, no, no. Instead, you'll find yourself buoyed upon it, and your feet shall barely reach below the surface. But, uh, how? More magic, no doubt. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> There's no magic this time. Instead, just below the water's surface is a narrow, snaking causeway. Only visible when you're upon it. Attackers don't know about it. And even if they do uncover it and use it, it will simply funnel them, single file, straight into the points of the waiting arrows and spears that stand vigilant upon the parapets of the main gate, as, as well as uh, other parapets that are dotted around the perimeter of the central island. The guards here are uh, traditionally women, for there are no fiercer defenders of hearth and home than the eldest daughters of the tribe, and no eyes more keen than those of a mother's gaze. Anyhow, we are now at the main gates. They are twice the height of a man and thrice as wide, and made of ancient hardwoods and clad in old metals. These are inscribed with Ogham wards and protective symbols, maintained by the village's truthsayer, old uh, Murdo MacBaldock, the man who actually recognised the potential in me and sent me off to the seminary after my father had disappeared. Anyhow, the doors of the gate are well looked after and open smoothly and silently, thanks to a system of weights and counterweights acting on each door. Once in, you'll find yourself in the main street. This was a playground for us as a children, and we used to tease and chase the dogs that liked to run up and down it, searching for unattended food. Most of the houses in the outskirts here are sod huts, but the size of the buildings will increase as you head towards the huge turf-roofed hall that dominates the central mound. The door to the feasting hall here is a finely carved piece of oak, depicting the old gods fighting against the hordes of chaos. Within, once you move past the diligent sentries, you'll see that the hall is long and low and purposefully dimly lit by pitch-soaked torches on the walls, as well as individual lamps filled with aromatic oils that stand on each low table. It's all to put the people within at ease and relaxed, so as to uh, pacify the fiery spirits that dwell within us, especially when the old uh, whiskey's flowing. Your eyes now will, uh, no doubt, first be drawn to the massive fireplace that dominates the far wall, but uh, equally impressive will be the wall to your right that's covered in small kegs of the aforementioned whiskey stacked up from the floor to the ceiling. You have arrived, and it is time to plonk yourself down on the floor and eat, drink, and be merry. For life is hard in Albion, and what joy you can find must be seized with both hands before it slips away. Advice as true here as it was back there. Ah, yes, indeed. Well, with that, let's have ourselves another drink. And, Cedric, you can finally get to telling us all about this citadel of lead. Thank you.